Okay, so I see a lot of people say they struggle with um, with bass lines. Um, and I play bass and sometimes I struggle with bass lines. Uh, it just depends on the situation. But I will say there's a few tips that I found that work. So this is video, this video rather, is more about tips that you can use to help you kind of create a bass line. But by no means am I saying these are the rules or this is all you have to do or it's the one and only way to do it. There's so many ways to create um, bass lines. Some people play them by ear, which sometimes I do too. It just depends. Sometimes I use scales. I'll show you my a few techniques. Here we go. So I created this track. Uh, these are the drums, the stuff in red. So and then this this blue is the chords. The key is I want you to see the chords. So I use scalar. So let's do this. So here's scalar. I'm playing in the key of either G major, I mean G minor rather, or D flat or D major. And this is the scale. It's a Iwoda scale. Just like, I guess, Tokyo, used in Tokyo. I'm not 100% sure. That's just what the scale is. All right. So the chords, let me pick the chords. Hold on a second here. These are the chords. And as you look at them, you can see, if you see my mouse, hold on, make sure you see that. You'll see where the notes are if you touch the notes. So you see my cursor there is on G. So these notes at the bottom here of the chord, obviously these are the chords, is typically the root note. Sometimes it's not though the case, but, um, and you see if you touch the actual note, at least in this DAW, you can see what it is. So there's a G1, then up here you see a G2, and now here you see a D1. And then you have this uh, starts back over, right? With this chord back again. And then we have another chord that's over here. That's a kind of a added chord in there that starts with a C, I believe. Yes. Oh, you can't see it. Let me turn. There you go. So yeah, it's a um, it's actually a G a G sharp. Okay, it's one chord. So those can be your starting points. Like let's say a basic bass line to just follow the chords could be a simple G G D. I'm sorry, G G G D. Right, and then starts over G G. D, I'm sorry, G, 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 G sharp, and then to a D. So you could just pick off those, highlight that bottom row of chords, copy it and drop it in, and then you have a simple bass line that would just follow it. And that would work fine, right? Or you could take that and that um, same chords and follow a bass line or make a bass line up by playing the actual chords so that they have some type of rhythm to them. And you and what's cool about that because this is like a simple chord progression. I mean simple in the sense that it's not a lot of chords in it. It should be pretty easy to follow. Right? So sometimes what I would do is I would make like multiple bass lines throughout the song. What I mean by that is there may be one bass line that's a standard for it. But when I have breaks, like here, you can see a break where the drums drop out completely. Then I changed up and right here, I did a simple bass line that's different. So I'll show you that, what that sounds like in just a second here. So my bass that I chose, and you don't have Trillion, don't worry, it's not a big deal, is this muted uh, bass. There's free bass uh, things out there on desktop. And then the one I like on iOS is, um, Man, uh, I fretless bass. If you want a real sounding bass, that's about that one and some of the bass uh, sounds in the gospel music's pure synth sound really good. That's one thing iOS is missing. I feel like is a really good, not like synth bass. There's a plenty of them, a plethora of them, but like a good bass, authentic bass sounding guitar app. There, is n there isn't any that I can think of that just sound that good. 
One free thing you can do is with uh, Ample Sound. Um, I think they're amplesound.net is they make a nice little P bass. Kind of sounds in between a P bass and a uh, jazz bass, which you can get the free demo version of it if you want one. And I think it, it's the light uh, version and it sounds pretty good. I mean, for, for a bass, there's also a nice, an okay bass, I'll say. I'm not gonna say it's super nice, but it's okay. It'll work. Spitfire Audio, the labs. If you get their labs, they have um, a bass amp, electric bass amp, and they have a electric bass DI. So you can add like an amp to it. That's another trick. Sometimes I'll get like a really generic bass sound and then I'll add like a um, IK Multimedia amp to Amplitude, which, um, oh, on iOS, you could use uh, Tone Stack Pro if you get it on sale. Don't buy it when it's like 50 bucks, it's crazy. But um, if you get it on sale or if you find another bass amp or something, just get a generic dry bass sound and then add that to kind of give it a little character, the bass amp, all right? There's a couple good bass amps. Nimbrini makes a really good one. Uh, it's Black Ice, I believe is what it's called. I like that one a lot. I'll use it with my real bass when I, well, sometimes when I record on iOS, which I don't do as much anymore, but um, yeah. So anyway, those are some good options and some ways to make it sound good too. All right, so back to the bass. So I created a bass line here. I'll let you hear what this one sounds like. Well, first of all, I need to let you hear what the track sounds like. So here's the track with the drums or the chords, I should say, with the drums. So this is an electric piano from Labs that is actually free. Here, I'll show it to you. This is the Labs electric piano chorus. Grab this, like all these, the Labs stuff that's free is really good. It has more of an authentic sound. Oh, so if you're on uh, iOS, uh, Decent Sampler, and then the Piano Book website, those, that's some pretty good stuff in there too, which is kind of like the, the um, Spitfire stuff. On desktop, you got Spitfire. On iOS, you have Decent Sampler. So if you get the opportunity and you want to grab that and you want that almost authentic sounding um, instruments, they have a lot of them, different percussive ones too. That's the place to go. Okay, so you kind of hear, I already played you the chords. Oh, let me go back. Oops, pressing all kinds of buttons here. Okay, sorry. All right, so there you go. So what I did for the bass line, instead of just playing a straight bass line to follow it, I like to get on the on the keyboard or whatever you have. If you don't have a keyboard, if you got the iPad and, or even iPhone and you wanna use the touch screen, that's one of the things I like about uh, iFretless is it's really good like to sit, you can sit there and get the vibrato and the strings and using your fingers. Or if you have a keyboard, use the keyboard to play the notes. And um, on desktop, I use the mod wheel. So the mod wheel on the like ample sound stuff will vibrate the string. So I'll use it just kind of like back and forth. I use that also on the Swam instruments for the vibrato. So it's the same principle. It's so using the vibrato of, the, of your finger, imagining your finger on a string. Right, and, and vibrating it. All right, so there you go. So that's a way to use to make bass. So here's what I what I like to do. I like to use the scale. So on iOS, you have, and also desktop, you have Scalar, Scalar, right? So once you, and you've seen me do videos where I say set the scale here. So let's say now, <clears throat> excuse me, now you wanna play bass. So I might turn that off. Well, you can see here, the blue notes represent notes within that scale. But this particular, um, sometimes like if I just want to play and I don't want to have to think about, oh, if I miss or hit a button, I have done this before. I've shown you, you can do it also in, uh, in um, Atom 2, where you can map it to the white notes. So if you're in like AUM and use Atom 2, map it to the white notes. So scale white notes. Scalar has that option in there. So you wouldn't need Atom 2 to do it. You just do it in Scalar. And now you'll see all the white notes carry. And I don't care what you press. It's just playing the white notes. Now you see it on here on this actual screen playing other notes. 
but all I'm doing is hitting the white notes. In fact, I can show you. There's the keyboard, just white notes only. All right. Cool. All right, so I use the white notes and this is what I came up with. For sake of time, I'm not gonna play it again, just let you hear what it sounds like. So. Oops, let me actually turn it on. I have it, I have it muted. All right, here you go. Okay, that's repeated. So how did I do that? I pretty much have scalar attached to the base, right? So if you look over here, I'm gonna turn this. And you can see right here, I have scalar two controlling the base. So what that means is I can just play any of these notes and it'll be in scale. Well, you can do that or you can turn that off and you can see that here's the notes and learn them, right? So you have C, or I'll go down here. So you can see it, C, D, D sharp or E flat, F, G, A, B flat or A sharp. Okay, those are your notes. So it's only those, uh, what is that, seven notes that are in the scale. That means all your bass notes are gonna have to fall in within that or should fall within that to make it more appropriate. And that's exactly what I did. And I created, use the rhythm between the drums and the chords, which is why I usually start with drums or chords of some sort, because it's so much easier to get that bass line um, lined up. And you, you can kind of just hear it. Just take it by ear and play what sounds good to you. If you and the cool thing about working with MIDI is if you make a mistake, you can always go back and say, oh, that note needs to be there. Like I wanted this note to be D, a D, I think I played originally, I played an F. But actually the note should be, if I'm really doing it right, should be a G sharp. So. So that's where it should be. So I'm gonna go in and fix those on my bass notes because I know I put the wrong note there. Should be a G sharp. And how do I know that is because I played a G sharp in the chord. So I played a G sharp in the bass note of the chord. So that's how I know that, by the way. All right, so I fixed that. So we should be good. So now you'll see, now let me let you hear where I dropped the notes out. I'm gonna start about right there. And you'll see I changed the bass line here just to give it something different, a vary it a little bit. So you see that? All I did was play a G. There's another G. I used a little F as an accent. It's also in the scale, but just a little accent note just to give it some, make it feel more real to me, like I'm playing it on an actual bass. And then here's a little a little run to give myself a feel. I call it, it's, a, it's a feel in drums and in bass it would be like it would be like a little uh, run. Um, yeah, or turnaround actually. Um, in piano, I think we said turnaround. All right, so there you have it. So I'm using uh, Trillion. You don't need Trillion. I think I said that already. So just get whatever bass you have. But the key is play it by ear and do not quantize your bass. That is the worst thing in the world. Because in reality, we don't play perfect like that. So to give it that human feel, just leave it, just play the notes do not like sit there. I'm not saying you can't draw the notes in. There is a trick to that that you can use to draw them in. I'm not really a person that likes to draw in notes because to me, it takes too much dang time. I'd rather play it. And then if I'm off a note, I could adjust a note or two here or there, but not have to sit there and do it. But play your notes if you can. It, it just really helps. But you'll notice if you zoom in here, I'll zoom in on this. These notes are right, not right on the line. You see that? Even the start note is not right on the line, dead center. Don't don't put your stuff 
on the line with bass notes. Anytime you're playing lead, melody, or bass, or something to that nature, don't do it. You might, even like if you, I'm gonna show you, even with my uh, chords here, mind you in Scalar, you can turn on timing and velocity. You'll notice my chords, these are chords, and they're not right on the one. Here, I'll zoom in a little more. Look at this, they're off. That's how I want it. Because that's, to me, that sounds more real. So you want that, especially depending on the type of music you're doing. If you're doing something maybe that's EDM, maybe not. But for a nice R&B, pop, uh, hip hop type joint, where you want it, you want it to be a little loose so it's not like so rigid. Even my drums are off. Mind you, I play these drums in. I, didn't qu I don't quantize the drums. But you'll see here's snares. Look, this snare is a little bit before this line where it would hit. This one's a little after. I could go in and adjust them because that's the cool thing about uh, Ableton. But I'm not because I like them to be a little here and there off. So that the problem is your ear gets this ear fatigue. And it can happen if the stuff is so rigid, so spot on on everything. So try not to get too twisted with all that. Just play the notes. So I just wanted you to hear that kind of vibe. Um, toward the end on the drums, what I did was added in um, this. So there's the option too. I could, in theory, I could pull that back. Maybe pull that back. Let's see how that sounds. Right, to give it some a little dropout point. So maybe even drop these out, my hats out. Okay. So this was about the bass line, even though you see me doing other stuff. So come up with a couple variations in your song. That's all you need. And do your play your bass line through and through. Try to play the bass line. Do not quantize. That's the other tip. And the last one, of course, is um, use the scale. Because the scale is going to keep you pretty much right every time you play it. You won't have to worry about that. Now, some people say, oh, don't lose the scale because it can make it whatever. If you choose not to use the scale, that's on you. Just know that if you use the scale, it's a safe way to stay within the, the arrangement and not have to just copy chords and do a simple bass line. It runs along with the, uh, with the key. I mean, with the um, chords. But um, options are out there. I'm just giving you ideas and options. Of course, make your own vibe. But do your own thing. Don't uh, completely rely on everything I say because it is some... There are some truths to it. But at the same time, there's some people that would say, don't ever do that, All right? That's just their, that's each person's opinion. And uh, I'm just giving you mine. And that's about it for this video. I think I'm gonna end it. We're at about 19 minutes. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the uh, comments. Uh, questions on why I do what I do or what, as far as my um, way of recording. Um, sometimes you'll see me pull a bass out and really play it. Sometimes I'm just trying to do something quick. And if I don't think the song really has to have a actual bass, then I won't do it. I'll just do it a different way. But either way, the key is have fun. Don't stress yourself out. It's music. You're supposed to enjoy it. It's supposed to be relaxing. All right, I'm out until the next one.